Hi there guys, this is Nikhil from Greedy Tech and this is the tips and tricks video on the Samsung J5 and the J7 series and probably the J3 series. Next we have something called as do not disturb mode. Just go to settings and here we have it, do not disturb. It is very similar to the silent mode which we've known earlier but here we can tweak it a little bit. So this is how I use it. So I just enable it. I enable a schedule. So every day Monday to Sunday from night 11 to morning 7, I won't be interrupted for normal calls. I won't be interrupted for messages or any notifications. My phone rings only when I get a call. So this is how I do it. I add exceptions. So I go to custom alarms and calls from all and messages from none. And that's pretty much it. So for alarms, I'll get an alarm. So if there is an active alarm, the alarm will ring. If someone calls, the phone will ring. And besides these two, if I get a message or if someone pokes me on Facebook or send me a message on WhatsApp or Facebook, the phone will not interrupt me. It will simply be silent. So that's something I really like about this. Do not disturb mode. You can find the same feature in other Marshmallow based devices. So anyway, going on next, we'll look at the notification toggles. These are the 10 toggles that you can quickly access. And if you want to access some more, you can simply press this down button and you get a total of 17 notification toggles. You can rearrange the position of any of these toggles by clicking the edit button over here and now you can rearrange them. The top 10 toggles will be easily accessible just by doing this. So these are the first 5 notification toggles and these are the next 5 notification toggles. And to access the rest, simply press the down button and there we have it. By the way, this is swipe pad. Home button on this device is a physical button and I haven't used any device with a physical home button since Samsung Note 3. So I use swipe pad. So every time I want to go to home, I swipe from the edge and go to this shortcut to go to the home screen. If you want to know more about that or the must have apps, Check out the must have apps video for Samsung J5, J7. The link for that will be in the playlist in the description area. Going on next, if you open up the camera app, this is how it looks and we have some nice modes over here which you might be already familiar with. And besides that, if you open up the front facing camera, we have a flash on the top. So to enable the flash, well actually it is not a flash, it is simply a torch. So to enable that, just click this button and the flash will turn on. Next, if you take a picture, before taking the picture itself, it will simply turn the screen completely white to maximize the brightness before taking the picture. So that's something really nice. And in the front facing camera, we have a nice mode called as, which is like a smaller panorama shot. So this is the demonstration and it looks pretty cool. In the camera app, we also have something called as pro mode. So just go to modes and select professional or pro. So in this mode, we can change each and every aspect of the camera. We can change the exposure, ISO, shutter speed and take those perfect shots if you are an expert at doing that. By the way guys, sorry for the voice, I am sick. So anyway, the next thing would be the display modes. So out of the box, the display is set to adaptive brightness or adaptive display. So if you are not pleased with how the display on this device looks, you can simply go to settings, display and select screen modes. And as I've said, it is set to adaptive display. We can select AMOLED Cinema, AMOLED Photo or the basic one. I usually set it to adaptive display, but if you think the colors are more saturated, you can go with the basic or the other modes. On this device, we don't have an ambient sensor. If you're outdoor and if you think the brightness on this device is low, you can enable the outdoor mode to push that brightness to its limits. Next, we can change the fonts on this device. Once again, by coming to display in settings, select the font. You can choose any one of these inbuilt fonts or you can even download them. You can also change the size of the text by simply doing that. Let me change the font and click done. Now, now the font has been changed and the size of the text has also been changed. This will be applied throughout the phone. As you can see the settings has been changed. If we go to the phone dialer, even that will be changed. 
let me open up messages as you can see everything is enlarged and big and even the font size has been changed so let me just go back to the defaults going on next if this device is going to be used by some elderly people they might have a hard time answering calls or ending calls so for that we have a nice option in accessibility just go to accessibility and now go to answering and ending calls now you can answer the calls by pressing the home button and end calls by pressing the power button so this is something that i enable for every phone that my mother uses these are the options that i would suggest you to enable if this phone is going to be used by any elderly people going on next go to about device then scroll down a little bit and select software information and now scroll down once again and click on the build number at least seven times then you will enable the developer options so once you do that you will be able to find developer options above about devices from here you can enable oem unlock so if you want to root this device you need to enable this option to do that next you can also enable usb debugging from here besides the software features we have something called as usb backup so this is the app whenever you connect a usb otg pen drive to your phone it will give you option to backup your information onto that otg pen drive so if you want to steal any information from your friend's phone or from your sister's smartphone just snoop around things then you can do that too so just connect the otg pen drive and start up and start the usb backup you can also choose to do an auto backup you can even create a backup reminder you can also alert the user about low internal storage before removing the otg pen drive just go to settings select storage and you have the option to eject the otg pen drive so this is the symbol or icon for ejection just select that and just give it some time until the phone unmounts the pen drive just give it some time and now once it is done you can remove the otg pen drive make sure you eject the otg pen drive every time you remove it otherwise you might end up corrupting the entire drive going on next in the camera app if you go to settings you have the option to change the default storage location as this device has just 16 dB internal storage out of which you get 9.5 GB it's suggested to put all your images and videos directly to your SD card so to do that just select storage location and select SD card if you select device all your images and videos will be saved to your internal storage and you have very less space to install your favorite games or apps going on next if you go to settings once again We have something called as easy mode. Once again, if this phone is going to be used by elderly people, just enable the easy mode and it will completely change how the device will look and feel. As you can see, the image icons have been increased, the text size has been increased and even the phone dialer will look slightly different. It looks bigger and you can add additional shortcut apps. So if you just want to configure this phone for your grandparents, this is something you can do now in the settings we have the option to move applications to the sd card i'm not sure how well it works but you do have the option just go to settings select applications and now select application manager now select the application that you want to move and go to storage over here you have the option to change the storage location just select change and from here you can select the SD card as the storage location and once you do that the application will be moved from your internal storage to your SD card over here we have the option for default applications from here we can change the default browser app dialer app messaging app and even some other apps so let me just change the default browser app from google chrome to browse or brave calling app to the default app messaging app to textra so in this way we can easily change the default apps on our device besides that we can also change all the settings of the system apps from this single page so if you want to change some settings about the camera app just select that and you have this additional options if you want to change some features or settings for the phone or the phone dialer 
you can do that too. One of the important features of Android Marshmallow is app permissions and you won't be able to find that very easily on this device. So to access the app permissions page, just scroll down and select privacy, privacy and safety and select app permissions. Now it will list all the app permissions over here and once you select a permission, it will list all the apps that have requested for that permission or have access to that permission. So let's say you don't want to give parallel space access to the calendar permission. So just disable that and now parallel space don't have permissions to access your calendar. So it is that simple. And finally, if you go to settings once again, you have something called as smart manager. So over here, you can simply click one button to clear your RAM cache and other stuff and make sure your device is running very smoothly. For additional security, you can also choose to enable Nox, which will protect your device from any harmful viruses and even rooting your device. So that's pretty much it for this video guys. These are all the tips and tricks and hidden features of Samsung J series phones, whether J3, J5 or J7. And I hope you found this video to be helpful and would forgive me for the bad voice. So that's it for this video guys. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found this video to be helpful. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up and share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel to see more videos just like this. And as always, keep smiling.